Hey, it's Matt from Practice Perfect. Welcome back to the Accelerated Learning Center. Today we're going to learn about how to set up assessment and treatment fee codes. Let's get started. Step 1. Fee codes are the basis for all the money that you will be bringing into your clinic. Each fee code represents a service or product that you're offering, such as physical therapy treatment, 45-minute massage, or ice pack. To access your list of fee codes, select Housekeeping, Financial, and then Fee Codes from the menu bar. Step 2. This page is essentially a blank slate. You will need to manually add all of the treatments, assessments, and products that your clinic provides. Please note that this portion of the setup may involve a lot of data entry. Take note of the information available to you from this view. The code, a description, payer rate, rate string, and location. You can also use the search bar at the top of the list to easily find a specific fee code. To add a fee code, select the green plus sign from the function bar. This will bring you to the fee code detail view. This view can also be reached by double clicking an existing fee code. Step 3. There are a total of three tabs comprising the fee code. Fee, Payer Rates, and Provider Types. Let's start with the Fee tab. The Fee tab has been divided into five different sections. Description, Defaults, Rate, Charge Taxes, and Usage Rule. And today, I'm going to walk you through each one of them one by one. The very first field you will notice in the description section is location. This field is generally left untouched unless the service is only offered at one location. Next we have the code field. We recommend choosing something simple that's recognizable at a glance. For example, if you're creating a fee code for a worksite assessment, you may want to call this code something like WorkAx. Then, use the field directly below to write a brief description of the code. This is the description that will appear on actual invoices. Check off the Can Change Description box if you want to be able to make adjustments to the description as it's being entered during each patient's visit. While the description is changed on the invoice, the actual fee code's description will remain the same. Next, you will choose the ledger account to which the revenue will be attributed, such as workers' comp revenue. Note that a fee code can only be associated with one account. You will notice that this defaults to treat, which is all that is required for most clinics. Please contact our support department if you wish to add more revenue ledger codes. Next, you will choose the category you'd like to assign the fee code to by using the drop-down list next to fee type. The system will choose treatment by default if this field is left blank. This is mainly used for reporting summary purposes and does not have to do with billing in any way. Please note that if you're setting up a fee code for a product and not a service, you will need to click the product checkbox next to the code. This enables you to enter additional information about this product, such as the supplier and the cost price. Notice that selecting this option enables another tab entitled Inventory. Step 4. Once that is done, move on to the fields in the Default section. The Default section is directly related to Practice Perfect's ability to track funding maximums allotted to any given patient and calculate extended prices based on units, quantity, or time. The default duration is the amount of time that treatment being provided usually takes. Default visits represents the number of visits that the service counts for against any set funding maximum. For an assessment or treatment, this is generally set to 1. For a report, product, or any other non-hands-on fee, such as a cancellation fee or a copay, it is generally left blank. 
If the fee code is meant for anything other than a treatment or assessment, default quantity should be set to 1. There should not be a case where a fee has both a default quantity and a default visit. If the fee code is billed based on a unit, then default units should contain 1, or the number of units you normally charge for this particular service. In some jurisdictions, units are calculated based on the number of minutes taken to perform a service. Please don't change this unless specifically instructed by our support department. Step 5. Next you're going to want to set the default price of your treatment or assessment in the rate section. Practice Perfect is pretty flexible in the way that you can set your rates. The very first option is flat fee. Select this option if you'll always be charging the same for this service regardless of the time spent performing it. Per items ought to be chosen if you're creating a fee code for a product, report, mileage fee, copay, or anything else not treatment related. Items with a default quantity of 1 are generally priced using this option. Per visits should be selected if you wish to charge patients per treatment in the same manner as you would a product. Use per minutes if you want to base the amount you're charging on the minutes spent providing the service. For example, if you want to charge $25 per 15 minutes instead of a $50 flat fee for half an hour of service, this is where you make that designation. As mentioned, Practice Perfect will do the math and extend your duration and per minute fee to come up with a total for the charge during service entry. The last option is per units. This is where you would specify the price per one unit. It is important to note that the total values for each service will be respected based on these settings during treatment entry. For example, if rate entered for a specific code is $20 per one unit, and you enter four units when billing the patient, the total fee will be calculated as being $80, or four times $20. Step six, now let's move on to the usage rule section. The first field in this section is a text box where you can write out any comments pertaining to the usage of this fee code. Go through the checkboxes to the right of the usage rule section and check off the items that are applicable to this fee code. Tick this box if this fee should never be charged to a payer, such as a cancellation fee or perhaps an ice pack or a copay fee. Split info required is an advanced function that doesn't apply to most users. This should be skipped. Progress note required indicates that a daily note needs to be entered if this service was performed and any reports indicating missing daily notes will be triggered based on this setting. And on top of that, Practice Perfect will automatically create a progress note if this box is checked. Typically, any treatment or assessment related services should have this option checked off if you are in fact using Practice Perfect for your electronic medical records. The timed fee code option should generally be left alone. It only has specific uses in certain jurisdictions. If you charge sales tax on any of the products or services that you offer, please contact our support department for information on how to set this up. Step 7. Now let's have a quick look at the Payer Rates tab. The Payer Rates allows you to define different rates for the same service for each individual insurer. A payer can be added by using the green plus sign here. Note that this tab is not often used, but if you do charge different rates to different insurers for the exact same fee code, then please contact our support department and we'll give you some more information about setting that up. Step 8. Now let's take a quick look at the provider type screen. This is where you can attach the types of providers who will be administering this service to their patients. Provider types can be added to the fee code by simply pressing the green plus sign. Leaving provider types blank indicates that anyone can bill for this service. Provider types that were not added to this list will be prevented from being the treating provider on these charges. 
If provider types haven't already been set up, you can do so by going to Housekeeping, Contacts, and then Provider Types from the menu bar at the top of your screen. Step 9. Remember the product checkbox in the Fee tab? It's time for us to see what it does. Checking it off adds the Inventory tab to your screen. This tab is comprised of one heading, Supplier slash Cost. Input the original cost price that you paid for the product. Then choose a supplier. Note that the options listed in the supplier tab are taken directly from the other contact section. Use the fields below to input some data about the quantities of the product, such as the minimum quantity, i.e. the lowest amount of product that you can have on hand before reordering, and the reorder quantity, i.e the amount that you will order once the minimum quantity has been reached. The only way to adjust the quantity on hand is by entering sales of the product through regular treatment entry or through the inventory adjustment function. Well, thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out the other accelerated learning videos at practiceperfectemr.com. Bye for now.